political strength grew, his relations with court follows the greatest trolls, black marketeers, and grand scale dope pushers. I could do it tomorrow, I could do it next week, I could do it the week after. And I could maybe just hang on to the documents and never do anything about it, and just sit by and let time go on. But uh, the thing that I'm overpowered with, totally overpowered with, is the fact that this very moment we're killing people in Vietnam with our tax dollars as a result of our... <laughs> When I came into possession of these papers, I looked around, and nobody in government had done anything. The only thing that was being done in government was an effort to stifle and hide this stuff. And it just dawned on me that somebody, if we're, we're going to have any faith at all in our institutions, somebody from government's got to be, got to have the, the, uh, the same resolve, the same feelings uh, for, for stopping the killing as, as Ellsberg did as the uh, Post did, as the New York Times did, as the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, as all these jerks, I only myself, because the people who released this were bureaucrats. You know, bureaucrats, the people that we disparage so often. They weren't elected officials, they were bureaucrats. And, and they have much less uh, risk than I have. The risk that I have is being exposed from the Senate.
so many press people sitting at the at this side of the table that uh, I think uh, things things have changed with the media the fourth estate uh, <laughs> okay. and probably since the activities of the New York Times and the Washington Post and a few others that uh, there's there's developed a certain arrogance <laughs> I don't know. We're developing as we go. I used that I could find. Yes, that's the reason why I'm using this vehicle. But uh, I'm not immune to uh, censure or expulsion. back to order. Congressman, I want to thank you very, very personally and state in a very unusual fashion uh, something that, that should be noted for history. That is that the first time you and I met was when we, a few hours ago, shook hands at this witness table. I am acquainted with your record. I know that uh, you were one of the early ones back in May of 1965 to oppose our involvement in Vietnam. I know what that opposition has cost you as a person uh, to this committee. Take the time to focus on me for a second. Uh, I have to say that I have been seriously concerned about American involvement in Vietnam from the very beginning. I think it was dead wrong. And uh, I think those of us who felt that way at that time have been vindicated. Uh, I guess that's about all I can say. I'm not trying to crow or anything. I'm not trying to say I told you so. But I think if we've had this conviction, such as you and I hold, I think we've got to keep on. We've got to keep up the... And I repeat again, what's wrong with this nation and what's at issue at this particular point in our history is not the fact that the American people have lost faith and trust in its leaders, but the very simple fact that over the last 20 years, up to today, the American leadership has not demonstrated, has not had the faith and trust in the American people. And had that faith and trust and straightforwardness been present, this nation would not be in the mess it's in today. And these papers that I'm reading bring that case out more clearly than I could ever write it. The Pentagon, it's in three tiers. I'm reading summaries of narratives. The narratives are based upon the documents themselves. And Congressman, if you'll permit me, I'll continue to read. I'd, I'd like to this make. Summary. May I just like to offer one sentence, Senator, and that is, if the backed by the United States, DM refused, and I think these are important lines. Backed by the United States, DM refused to open consultation with the North Vietnamese concerning general elections when the date for these fell due in July 1955. Pressing, me, pressing his military advantage against the sex, he moved to consolidate his position existing economic and financial agreements with France and called upon France to denounce the Genevers of the Geneva Accord accords and pursued an international and domestic policy of anti-communism. Both Vietnams took the view that temporary. But statements could not gainsay the practical import of the occur.
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many pages were you given? No, no, but I've got, that's, that's all in this. That's being released tonight. We're releasing all this stuff to the press tonight. What is it? The, uh, You'll have all the Kennedy stuff tonight that's coming out right now. We have already have it. No, just please, just, yeah, no, just let me go through it again. Apparently, my staff, under my instructions, has negotiated with the three wire services to give you copies of these. When I made the uh, motion to put it in the record and we're getting some more language so that I can get the record proper, uh, that automatically, uh, we think, authorized me to, to go ahead and do this. So you'll be getting these three documents before the night's done. I tried to do that on the Senate floor. I was <laughs> But, but, if, but I don't know how, how long this will last, so uh, I'm going to try and uh, get as many documents out as I can this evening. Why did you decide to do it this way? Because what, as I view the situation, what happened, a, somebody released this information. I don't, uh, I don't know who. I read the newspapers like the rest of you and watch TV, and they say it's uh, Daniel Ellsberg, and he apparently has uh, confessed. I think he's done a service to this country. He's all alone out there. And I think he's going to have an effect in ending this war. And I think the courage of the newspapers to print what they did in the face of the dangers that they face, economically and personally, the executives of these newspapers, I think is one of the great that I run. I, I Why do you about censure? I, well, that's less. Why do you... <laughs> so, if you I, if I, uh, expulsion is worse than censure. Well, Senator, what makes you think that you are liable to be exposed, expelled from the Senate for this? Well, I think you will judge the, those events as it goes on. Well, why did you decide yeah. to do it this way in this... Uh, because I, as, as I understand my legal rights as a United States Senator, uh, by convening this committee, I am still immune uh, under uh, other facets of the law that have not made uh, other people immune. Why didn't you do it tomorrow morning? Why didn't you... Uh... Uh, I felt that uh, it had. I had to make do it sometime. Senator, there's... Uh, do you know let me, let me just finish that one thought. And I, I don't understand, as a human being, with my mind, uh, that uh, Stu Symington called. Very simply, that, that the chief executive of this country, country probably spent anywhere from 50 to $120 million without Congress knowing about it. Now, Stu Simon, in mind you, sits on that special committee that's supposed to watch the CIA. Now, that, that the chief executive of this country did that, hired thousands of people in one country, moved them to another country, and then waged a war at the border of China without anybody knowing about it in Congress or the people. Now, supposing the Chinese people, the Chinese government decided to invade as a result of that provocation, then what would the public record be? that obviously they attacked our troops. And then the, then, then the documents, because you get lost in the nitty gritty, you get lost in, in the incidentals of, of the day. And, and it's much more important. By the documents, you mean the cables? Oh yeah, yeah, carried away. There's thousands of thousands. Do you have you, them? You, pardon me? Do you have these cables? Oh yes, yes. And, uh, and, and, I, and I spent hours reading them. And all I come away with is just with the, the gargantuan size of reading it. And so I could spend the next year reading. I could spend the next 10 years reading this stuff. But, but what counts is, is that somebody at the Pentagon performed a study, brought all these documents together, narrated all the documents, interrelated it, and, and this is a long narrative. And then on top of that, so that people in the subcommittee on buildings and grounds, it's the only chairmanship that I have, and I treasure it dearly. <laughs> Senator, are you concerned that any legal effort might be made to stop you from making these documents public? I, I think that, con that, that concern is obviously there, otherwise I wouldn't have what I consider some of the finest constitutional lawyers working for me uh, to help guide me in my decision well, making process. Well, obviously these fine constitutional lawyers didn't come in the buildings and grounds. Where'd you get them? The, they're, they're kind enough to volunteer. Are the Vietnam well, veterans... And, uh, they're retained by me. Well, the, the Vietnam, the Vietnam veterans, veterans uh, we share a same cause. And that is that they want to end the war and I want to end the but war. Had uh, the information to read them would have been right on the floor in that chamber, but I was denied that right by the Republican minority whip Robert Griffin.
Senator, have your legal experts told you that you're safe from any prosecution or injunction as long as you read the, these in your function as a subcommittee chairman? That's, uh, that's a question yet to be decided. Senator, do you have any hopes of this you, affecting the... the, the, the they, they, what they've told me is that's a question yet to be decided. The, that there is some possibility you could still be enjoined legally. There's, yes. As I, uh, let me state again. I'm not an attorney. I have no background in constitutional law. Uh, and, and, uh, and we're just uh, developing this. And I'm Concurrently, the United States began to channel aid directly to South Vietnam rather than through France. The counter-revolution of French policy then thrust upon the U.S. a choice between supporting Diem or the French presence in Indochina. The U.S. opted for Diem. By the time the deadlines for election uh, consultations fell due in July 1950, are extremely vague. But at one point, they are clear in stipulating that the elections are to be free, everything will not, as is often alleged, connive with DM to ignore the elections. Geneva Accords and his opposition to pre-election consultations were at his own initiative. However, the U.S., which had expected elections to be held, and up until May of 1955 had fully supported them, shifted its position in the face of DM's opposition. And of the evidence that Mary Dulles said that we did not support the Geneva Accords. We put this together uh, and, uh, and deal just in the summary words itself. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the summary itself. Mm -hmm. And I would have to reread the papers and reevaluate them and to say categorically that that's correct. It's my impression reading it from this that that is correct. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the United States took a position in support of the Geneva Convention. While we did not, we were not a signatory, we said, uh, indicated in a separate statement that we supported the Geneva Convention, as I recall it. As has been stated before, Congressman, of course, this is only one needs to adherence. In fact, about an accommodation. In other words, it wasn't a massacre of South Vietnamese. Not at all. Congressman, I'd like to impose and get into this record also, and I'll stop at this point in time, to read the statement I would have read on the floor of the United States Senate had I been permitted to read that statement on the floor of the United States Senate. But I was denied the right that I naively thought all senators had. And I must say, the reason why I was denied that right was because of my naivete. Because obviously, through Senate, stopped me from reading. Mr. President, can anyone doubt that we are agonized? Can anyone doubt that these are agonizing times for America? Can anyone doubt? that this nation is being torn apart by a war that sears its conscience. A terrible shadow of suspicion is across the land. Suspicion that we have made a terrible mistake. That we have spent lives and wealth in pursuit of an unworthy goal. Suspicion that government has not been influenced must be preserved. Preserved so that Southeast Asia would not have a communist government. We supported the French with American tax dollars to such an extent that by the war's peak, Americans were paying 80% of the total cost of the French war, not, not the, the American war. That was a policy endorsed by American leaders as a means of halting the spread of communism without expending American lives. Virtually without exception, American leaders have built upon those policy origins, provide blandly, boldly, from through the doors that connect this chamber with the outside world. And I was referring in this paper to the Senate chamber, and now I refer to this committee chamber and the committee system is part of Senate procedures and House procedures and congressional procedures. 
and I'm proud to be sitting here as a committee chairman of a humble committee and proud to have before me what I think is a great American, a congressman from New York. I did not seek these papers. When they were offered, I accepted them. I have reviewed the papers in my possession and read much of the material. It is a remarkable work, to say the least. Remarkable for what it says about those who, who about those chiefly responsible for managing our efforts in Southeast Asia in 1967. They flow from full possession of the facts. They knew that we would achieve no worthy goal and reap only the consequences. The study was tonight, right now. We have these documents. We have them under the most stringent circumstances imaginable. Mr. President, Mr. Congressman, there is no the people must know the full story of what has occurred over the past 20 years within their government. The story is a terrible one. It is replete with duplicity, connivance against the public and public officials. I know of nothing in our history to equal it for extent of failure and extent of loss in all aspects of the term. We can people, human beings, are being killed as I speak to you tonight, killed as a direct result of policy decisions we as a body have made. Arm arms are being severed, metal is crashing through human bodies because of a public policy. This government One may respond that we made such a sacrifice to preserve <coughs> freedom and liberty in Southeast Asia. One may respond that we sacrifice ourselves on the continent of Asia so that we will not have to fight a similar war on the shores of America. One can make these arguments only if he has failed to read the Pentagon Papers. That is the terrible truth of it all. The papers do not support our public statements. The papers do not support our best intentions. The papers prove that for 20 years, and certainly for the last 10 years, we have been big press admiration for your courage, sir. And uh, you're certainly one individual who hasn't knuckled under to the institutions and the regimentation that have become so great and so ominous in our society. I have one comment to make about your presentation today, and that is that for most of us who have followed 
the events in Southeast Asia over the past 20 years, the department has itself made... Congressman, again, I want to thank you on behalf of myself and the American people. Let me just say that a sub... The greatest trolls, black marketeers, and grand scale dope pushers. I could do it tomorrow, I could do it next week, I could do it the week after. And I could maybe just hang on to the documents and never do anything about it, and just sit by and let time go on. But uh, the thing that I'm overpowered with, totally overpowered with, is the fact that this very moment we're killing people in Political strength grew. His relations with court follows. Somebody, if we're, we're going to have any faith at all in our institutions, somebody from government's got to be, got to have the, the, uh, the same resolve, the same feelings uh, for, for stopping the killing as, as Ellsberg did, as the uh, Post did, as the New York Times did, as the St. Louis Post Dispatch, as all these jerks. I only myself because the people who released this were bureaucrats. You know, bureaucrats, the people that we disparage so often. They weren't elected officials, they were bureaucrats. And, and they have much less uh, risk than I have. The risk that I have is being exposed to Vietnam with our tax dollars as a result of our... When I came into possession of these papers, I looked around, and nobody in government had done anything. The only thing that was being done in government was an effort to stifle and hide this stuff. And it just dawned on me that...